Money. We use it every single day, whether it's buying coffee, paying for groceries, or tossing a quarter into a vending machine. But have you ever stopped to wonder, how are coins actually made? Who makes them? And how do we produce millions of them with such precision, speed, and security? Today, we're taking you deep inside one of the world's most fascinating industrial marvels, the giant coin minting plants, where billions of coins are created every year. From raw metal to shiny coins that end up in your pocket, the process is far more incredible than you might imagine. Before we dive in, don't forget to hit that subscribe button, give this video a thumbs up, and ring the notification bell so you never miss our behind-the-scenes journeys into the world's most mind-blowing factories. In the United States alone, the U.S. Mint produces over 11 billion coins every year. That means more than 30 million coins are made every single day. Imagine that. In the time it takes you to watch this video, hundreds of thousands of coins will be stamped and ready to circulate into the economy. The journey of a coin begins with raw materials. Coins aren't made of pure gold or silver anymore. Modern coins use special alloys to make them durable, resistant to corrosion, and cost-effective. The first step is rolling massive coils of these metal alloys into thin sheets, sometimes weighing up to 20,000 pounds. Imagine a roll of wrapping paper, but made entirely out of copper nickel metal. From these sheets, high-powered presses punch out small disks called blanks. Each blank is slightly larger than the finished coin and doesn't yet have any design. These blanks are produced at a mind-blowing speed hundreds of disks per second. Before a blank can become a coin, it needs to be strengthened. This process is called annealing. The blanks are heated in huge industrial furnaces to over 1,100 degrees Fahrenheit, 800 degrees, and then slowly cooled. This heat treatment gives the metal just the right balance of hardness and flexibility, so it won't crack when struck by the coin dies. After annealing, the blanks go through giant tumbling machines, where they are cleaned, polished, and dried. Any dirt, grease, or imperfections must be removed so that when the final coin is stamped, the design comes out crisp and sharp. At this stage, the blanks are called planchettes a technical name for coin blanks that are ready for striking. This is where art meets engineering. Every coin design starts with a master engraving. Artists and sculptors work together to create detailed images, whether it's a president's profile, a national emblem, or a commemorative design. Today, high-resolution 3D digital scans are used, but the tradition of hand engraving remains strong. Once approved, the design is scaled down and transferred onto hardened steel dies. Each die is essentially a negative mold of the coin. Imagine a stamp, but in reverse. When pressed against the planche with thousands of pounds of force, the die imprints the design permanently onto the metal. Creating a die is painstaking work. Even a tiny flaw could ruin thousands of coins. That's why dyes are carefully polished and tested before mass production begins. Now comes the most dramatic step, the striking. The planches are fed into enormous coin presses that can apply pressures of up to 100 to 200 tons in a single strike. That's like parking a jumbo jet on top of a coin for just a split second. With this immense force, the metal flows into the recessed areas of the die, capturing every tiny detail of the engraving, from the texture of hair to the shine of stars and stripes. High-speed presses can strike 750 coins per minute, per press. Multiply that by dozens of presses running 24-7, and you start to understand how mints can produce billions of coins a year. Some coins require a single strike, while others, especially proof or commemorative coins, 
may be struck multiple times for extra sharpness and mirror-like surfaces. Not all coins are flat around the edges. Many coins, like quarters or dollar coins, have ridged or reeded edges. This isn't just for looks, it's actually a security feature. Back in the days when coins contained real silver or gold, dishonest people would shave off small amounts from the edges. Reeded edges made tampering immediately obvious. Today, edge designs still play a role in making coins harder to counterfeit. Some modern coins even have lettering or micro-engraving around the rim. Every single coin must meet strict standards for size, weight, and design clarity. At Giant Mints, automated cameras and sensors inspect coins at lightning speed, rejecting any that don't pass the test. For example, if a quarter is even a fraction of a gram too heavy or too light, it's rejected. If the design is misaligned, it's rejected. Quality control ensures that only flawless coins enter circulation. Rejected coins aren't wasted. They're melted down and recycled back into new blanks. Once approved, the finished coins are counted and bagged in huge batches. A single bag can weigh over 2,000 pounds and contain hundreds of thousands of coins. From there, they're shipped out to banks and financial institutions, ready to enter circulation. Some coins also go into special collector sets, packaged in pristine condition. And just like that, the coins we use every day begin their journey into wallets, vending machines, and cash registers across the country. Beyond everyday currency, mints also create special edition coins, commemorating historic events, famous people, or anniversaries. These coins are often struck in precious metals like silver or gold, using advanced polishing techniques that give them a mirror-like finish. Collectors around the world treasure these limited edition coins, sometimes paying hundreds or thousands of dollars for rare sets. If you're fascinated by how everyday things are made, from giant machines to tiny coins that pass through our hands every day, don't forget to hit that subscribe button, give this video a like, and tap the bell icon. That way, you'll never miss more incredible behind-the-scenes stories from the world's most mind-blowing factories. Somewhere beneath the rugged terrain of the Andes, the deserts of Nevada, or the highlands of Australia, the Earth holds one of its most timeless treasures, silver. For thousands of years, this gleaming metal has been mined, traded, and cherished. But today, silver is no longer just a symbol of wealth or ornamentation. It powers smartphones, solar panels, and even satellites. And to meet this modern demand, the silver mining industry has evolved into a sophisticated and highly technical global operation. But what does it actually take to extract millions of ounces of silver from the Earth each year? The answer is a fascinating blend of geology, engineering, chemistry, and brute industrial power. In this episode, we're going deep into the world of silver mining, from exploration to smelting and everything in between. Long before modern machinery and high-tech refining methods, silver captivated civilizations across the globe. Its shimmer adorned the crowns of kings and the coins of empires. The story of silver mining stretches back over 5,000 years, beginning in ancient Anatolia, modern-day Turkey, where early miners used stone tools to chip silver ore from cave walls. By 500 BCE, the Greeks were extracting silver on a grand scale from the Laurium mines near Athens. That silver helped fund the Athenian navy, and in many ways, fueled the rise of democracy. Meanwhile in the Americas, indigenous cultures like the Incas revered silver as a sacred metal, calling it the Tears of the Moon. Everything changed in the 16th century, when the Spanish conquest of the New World unlocked vast silver deposits in Potosi, in present-day Bolivia. At its peak, this one mountain produced so much silver that it funded half of Europe's economy. But that wealth came at a brutal cost. Millions of indigenous and African slave laborers toiled under horrific conditions to meet colonial demand. A 
As centuries passed, silver mining spread across continents, from the Comstock Lode in Nevada during the American Wild West, to high-tech operations in Australia, Canada, and China today. Each era brought new tools, new challenges, and new understandings of both silver's value and its consequences. What hasn't changed is our fascination. Silver is more than a metal, it's a mirror reflecting human ambition, ingenuity, and at times exploitation. And as we explore how silver is mined in the modern era, we carry the weight of that legacy with us. The journey begins long before a single rock is moved. It starts with exploration, weeks, months, and sometimes years of geologists combing through remote mountain ranges and deserts in search of silver-rich deposits. Using a combination of geological surveys, satellite imaging, and exploratory drilling, they search for the telltale signs of mineral veins hidden deep underground. Once a promising site is found and test samples confirm sufficient silver content, a mining plan is drawn up. Environmental permits are secured, infrastructure is developed, and massive equipment begins to move in. Now, it's time to dig. Depending on how deep the silver deposit lies, mining operations take one of two routes. If the silver is close to the surface, open pit mining is the method of choice. This involves stripping away layers of earth, known as overburden, to reveal the ore beneath. Massive shovels and dump trucks haul out thousands of tons of rock each day, carving a giant staircase-like pit into the ground. If the deposit lies deeper underground, things get more complex. Vertical shafts are drilled straight down, and horizontal tunnels are carved through solid rock. Workers navigate a maze of passageways, often more than a mile beneath the surface, using drills and explosives to break apart ore. Whether surface or underground, the goal remains the same bring silver-bearing rock to the surface as efficiently as possible. At this stage, the ore still looks like nothing more than ordinary rock. In fact, each ton of raw material might contain just a few grams of silver. To get to the metal locked inside, the ore is trucked to a processing facility, where it undergoes a powerful mechanical transformation. The process starts with crushing. Giant jaw crushers bite down on the rocks, reducing them to chunks the size of baseballs. Those fragments then pass through secondary crushers, getting smaller and smaller until they resemble gravel. But to truly release the silver, the material needs to be pulverized. That happens inside large rotating mills filled with steel balls. As the mill spins, the ore is ground into a fine gray powder, similar in texture to flour. Only now is the silver ready to be separated chemically from the waste. With the ore reduced to powder, it's time for science to take over. The method used depends on the type of rock and how the silver is embedded. If the silver is found in sulfide minerals like galena or chalcopyrite, the ore goes through a process called froth flotation. In large tanks, the powdered ore is mixed with water, air bubbles, and a cocktail of chemical reagents. As the mixture churns, silver-containing particles attach to the air bubbles and rise to the surface, forming a foamy layer that can be skimmed off. What's left behind is mostly waste. If the silver is embedded in oxidized rock, a different technique is used, cyanide leaching. Though controversial, this method is highly effective. The ore is soaked in a weak cyanide solution, which dissolves the silver into a liquid form. That solution is then filtered, and the dissolved silver is extracted using zinc or activated carbon. Whichever method is used, the result is a concentrated form of silver. Still not pure, but now in high enough quantities to be economically viable. With the concentrate in hand, the next step is smelting, an ancient process brought into the modern age. The concentrate is shipped to a specialized facility where it's heated in furnaces that can reach temperatures well over 2000 degrees Fahrenheit. At these extremes, the silver melts and begins to separate from the impurities. 
Fluxes like silica or lime are added to help the process. They bind to unwanted materials, which float to the top as a thick layer of slag. The heavier silver sinks to the bottom, forming a molten pool of metal that is then poured into molds. As it cools, the silver solidifies into rough ingots, still containing traces of other metals like copper or lead. To reach the high purity levels needed for commercial use, the silver must undergo one final critical stage, refining. Refining begins with electrolysis. The rough silver ingots become anodes, electrodes that dissolve when electric current is applied. They're suspended in a tank of silver nitrate solution, alongside thin sheets of pure silver, which act as cathodes. As electricity flows, silver atoms from the impure anodes dissolve into the solution and redeposit themselves onto the cathodes in pure form. Over the course of several days, these cathodes grow into thick, gleaming sheets of high-purity silver. Meanwhile, any impurities either fall to the bottom of the tank as sludge, or remain suspended in the liquid. The refined silver is then melted once more and poured into standard bars, each one stamped with its weight, purity, and a unique serial number. Some of these bars are headed to bullion vaults and investors, others are destined for industrial plants, where they'll be turned into wires, mirrors, circuits, and connectors. Once refined, silver enters the global economy through a complex and high-security supply chain. Each bar is carefully weighed, tested, and sealed in tamper-proof packaging. From there, they're shipped to precious metal exchanges, manufacturers, and refineries around the world, often under armed guard or with GPS tracking. The applications are nearly endless. In smartphones, silver conducts electricity with unmatched efficiency. In solar panels, it converts sunlight into clean energy. In hospitals, it acts as an antibacterial coating. And in jewelry, it dazzles and endures. Every ounce of silver may look the same to the naked eye, but the journey behind each bar spans continents, cultures, and centuries of human progress. Silver isn't just a precious metal, it's a story of discovery, transformation, and relentless ingenuity. And now, you know how millions of ounces of it are mined, processed, and put to use one shimmering bar at a time thanks for watching if you love learning how everyday materials are made from the mines to the machines hit that subscribe button and join our growing community we've got more incredible journeys coming your way from the heart of the earth to the hands of innovation